So hello everyone, welcome to our live online info session for the BC Employment Law course at Ashton College. My name is CJ McGilvery and I'm with the Marketing and Communications team. Uh, very excited to have you all here. I am joined by several colleagues today. Uh, we have Maggie from Admissions. We have Lindsay, who's also from Marketing, uh, handling the back end technical aspects of this session. And we have Heidi, who is our instructor for the course. Uh, so thank you all for being here today. Just a couple of housekeeping notes. Um, we love to have lots of engagement, so there are several ways you can engage with us during this session. Uh, if you are joining us on Zoom, you can use the chat box to put any questions or comments you have. There's also the Q&A box feature where you can leave questions and we will answer those during the session. On Zoom, there's also the raise hand function. We will do a Q&A at the end, so if you want to jump on the mic and ask a question directly, you're more than welcome to. On Facebook Live, you can leave us a comment and we will monitor those during this session. Or if you're watching on YouTube, you can always leave us a comment there or just email us at ceinfo at ashtoncollege.ca or give us a call at 604-891-1256 or toll free at 1-866-759-6006. Uh, so before we get started with the interview portion of the session, I'm just going to invite Maggie to speak about the admissions process. Over to you, Maggie. Thank you very much, CJ. Hello, everyone. I would like to welcome you today in the live info session for the BC Employment Law course. My name is Maggie, Admissions Officer for the Continuing Education Division. Ashton College is proud to offer the BC or the British Columbia Employment Law course, and this is designed to provide you with a foundational knowledge of provincial employment laws and the rights and responsibilities of both employers and employees. The course duration is 13 weeks with a total of 39 hours of instruction. This is live online that will start on September 15 till December 8, 2021. Again, the start date is on September 15 till December 8, 2021. The webinars will be held on Wednesdays from 5 till 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. The registration fee for this course is $995 no admission requirements and a certificate of completion is given after the course. Register now for the upcoming BC Employment Law course and take your career to the next level. Please visit our website at ashtoncollege.ca for more information or email me at ceinfo at ashtoncollege.ca or call at 604-891-1256. Back to you, CJ, thank you. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Maggie. Um, so as I said, very excited to have everyone here today, um, particularly Heidi. I'm so excited to hear about your experience and expertise in this subject matter. Uh, so thank you for being here. And to start us off for the interview portion, uh, could you tell us a little bit about your career and educational experience and how you ended up at Ashton College? Hi, uh, thank you for a uh, very nice uh, introduction. Um, uh, well, uh, it started about, um, say about 30, 35 years ago. Um, I began my career working in the corporate sector. Um, a large part of my career was uh, working for the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation. I worked there for almost 20 years. Uh, I functioned at um, a senior level and I worked in human resources and labor relations and I really had a passion for that area. I've also worked at other uh, corporate organizations um, in that capacity and, uh, and uh, most of my experience was uh, in Toronto where I was born and raised. I moved out to British Columbia about uh, six years ago in September 2015 and at that point I was looking at just growing myself in a career path. Um, I always had a passion for connecting with people, just doing a lot of research, a lot of analysis. And I like to um, connect with people. And um, so I really, uh, I had an opportunity that presented itself from an organization that I was working with, a college that I was working with just before I moved out. And they said, you know, we, we really think you'd be interested um, or really good at um, teaching would have you ever tried it before because you've done a lot of workplace facilitation etc etc and investigation anyway i was given the opportunity and my first course ever i i fell um totally in love with it i really um had um really taken to the communication piece of it the analytical piece and a big part of my teaching philosophy is that 
um, I'm just as much of a student as uh, the mm -hmm. students that are in the lecture hall. And so I was learning just as much as the students, uh, as my students were. And so from there, I decided when I moved out here that I wanted to change course a little bit, get into teaching. And so I first started with Ashton when I first moved out to BC. Um, uh, and I, I taught both synchronously as well as asynchronously. I taught the full time as uh, I teach the full time as well as the part time programs. Um, I teach all um, uh, parts of the HR CPHR diploma program, as well as the law program. And so, um, in addition to Ashton, I also teach at other institutions uh, in Vancouver and Burnaby and um, just really have a passion for it. And um, so that's what got me here. And just also just constantly being a learner, exploring different topics and analysis. Amazing. I, I love that description. And you really exemplify one of the core values at Ashton College, which is that ongoing, you know, drive for knowledge that curiosity and hunger for continuing education. Um, yeah, it's a, a beautiful philosophy to have. And uh, congratulations on al almost uh, six years or so, I guess, with the company. That's very exciting. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, so getting really specific about the BC Employment Law course, what, what is the general structure of the course? What are some topics that are, are covered within it? Um, so, well, let me just um, first begin with, um, there'll be, so there'll be weekly PowerPoints where I will be covering uh, key topics on the specific chapters that are um, outlined in the curriculum that will be posted. Um, and so we will explore all different concepts. We will begin with the basics of, you know, what is, what is law? What is a statute? What is an act? Um, we will explore different um examples of how the law works, different elements of the uh, law we will touch on to um, all aspects of labor law. So we will explore employment standard acts, for example, occupational health and safety, um, just to name a few, and labor relations. And so those are some of the topics we're going to cover. Um, in terms of the actual structure of the course, there will be a midterm. There is a final exam. The final exam is cumulative because it builds on the statutes, the legislation, the law that you're, you're learning throughout the course. Um, I also do include quizzes um throughout the course just as a way it's more of a tool for students to see how they're doing um, to make sure that they're grasping the concepts as well as i include a number of labs so i may for example start uh, the class with a lab where i'll put you in say a breakout room you explore different concepts or a case study um, and explore different concepts um, or questions that i've um, put out there um, most of these quizzes and labs uh, will be during the class time, so it's not something that will take up additional time outside of uh, the course time. And another key part of the structure is participation. Participation is key, and if you can't um, join in on the actual synchronous times, um, I do create what's called a discussion forum. And that discussion forum is basically where I set up a number of questions every week. It might be one or two or three questions. And I might ask you to explore, for example, what is tort law or how does the Employment Standards Act differ, say, from BC to Alberta to Ontario? And can you give me an example of what, say, what the minimum wage is? So it would be these type of questions. But participation is key because it gets some um, people engaging in conversation, mm -hmm. even if it's... Um, on the platform or virtually live. Sounds great. Yeah, lots of ways to engage, uh, just like we do in these online info sessions. So thank you. Mm -hmm. um, so the course description mentions uh, that each province has a unique set of employment laws in place. Uh, this might be a fairly tricky question, but could you give us an example or a hint of a law that is unique to British Columbia, just so we can get an idea of that? Well, um, so the way the Canadian legal system is set up is that we um, are very, um, every jurisdiction has their own 
Um, for example, when we think of employment standards, they have their each, each of them have their minimum standards. Uh, so that might be your working wages or your working conditions. So for example, each province has a different minimum wage, they might have different working conditions. So your hourly uh, work week in one province may be a minimum of 38 and three quarter hours, another 36 hours. So it differentiates uh, across the country. Um, also, for example, BC has its own human rights code. So there's the, the language um, um, differs from province to province and territory. Um, so when we think about human rights codes, we're talking about, you know, legislation that prohibits employers from discriminating against people in a way when it's when we're talking about hiring or awarding pay or terminating employees. So we see differences in the language throughout uh, the legislation. Yeah, that's a, a great example. Certainly the um, minimum wage uh, comparison by province, I'm sure that's a really iconic example for a lot of people because it's you know, certainly mm -hmm. a debatable topic and you can see the differences visually from province to province. Awesome. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, and, uh, you know, a much more current example would be um, uh, the pandemic uh, return to work practices. Mm -hmm. It varies across each province, each territory in terms of everything from PPL to um, the specifics regarding occupational health and safety. So mm -hmm. we'll look be exploring those as well. Uh, this is just a question that popped into my head. Um, but based on that, you know, how things are unpredictable with the pandemic new regulations are coming up so does the course or you know with within your teaching style do you talk about ways to find the information you're looking for like what do you do when you don't have the answer readily available do you talk about like which sites to go to or kind of how to do that detective work oh absolutely that's key to um it's an underlying thread in my teaching style so i will um provide students with an overview of uh, key sites to visit, um, how to go about finding information. Mm -hmm. um, and something that I begin every class with is I take five minutes at the beginning of uh, every class and I explore, so what's going on in the news today? So we'll look at domestic, mm -hmm news stories as well as international because the global and international perspective uh, plays into uh, what what happens in our workplace so why would we look at news stories well there might be some news uh, new news announcement um, from the federal government in terms of it may have to do with um, sick leave it might have to do with um, ppe it might have to do with vaccinations and return to work practices so it gets students um, not only familiar with what's happening there because it's key to remain current uh, not only in the in the course but in everything that we do we have to be aware of what's going on because of all the different factors that affect the workplace, but also gets um, students comfortable with um, using their browser, doing the search um, and being current. It is so important to be current and to know where to find the information and to realize that, um, you know, if you're working in BC or if you're working in Alberta or Ontario or the Yukon, there's different um, websites that provide huge amounts of information, but they're also, they're different in terms of what the application is. Mm -hmm. That's honestly so inspiring to hear. I had an astronomy instructor who did the same thing every day at the beginning of the class. We would look at, you know, what's happening in space today? What's the latest news? Um, and I, I think just from a ge general educational standpoint, it's such a good practice for students to get into. And it really encourages, yeah, being relevant and um, being curious, being uh, adaptable and able to find answers when you need them um, in the workforce on, on the day, right? So it's really mm -hmm. inspiring to hear. Um, another question about the course outline. Um, so beyond the sort of basics of employment law, does the course reflect on more contemporary issues or emerging issues like gender inclusion in the workplace, privacy protection, remote work, uh, things like that? Does the course cover? Oh, absolutely. So we cover all of those. Um, so we cover case studies from the past, but then we also apply it to current practices, um, EDI, uh, equity, diversity, and inclusion, big key um, discussion in uh, organizations across Canada today. We'll be exploring those topics, how it relates to the course material, privacy protection, a big, big conversation, getting a, a, lot, lot, a lot of traction. 
um, remote, remote working, all of those elements are really important issues and they are issues that continue to be discussed and um, addressed in organizations today and will be addressed in the course. Awesome. Yeah, I imagine mm -hmm. the privacy protection is, uh, and you know, even a bigger issue, more discussed with remote working. You know, people using their own devices, their own you know Wi-Fi networks. It just becomes even more a, a conversation topic for sure. Um, mm -hmm. So, just want to give a little shout out for um, one of our attendees over Zoom. Um, we did we did have a question about the HR diploma program and uh, how that connects to this course. Um, so just to let you know, um, Maggie is chatting with our career programs admission advisor, and we're going to get you a little bit more information on that, and we'll uh, put that in the Zoom chat as soon as we have that info for you. Um, if folks have other questions, you can always email us at ceinfo at ashtoncollege.ca or phone 604-891-1256. Again, that's 604-891-1256 or toll free 1-866-759-6006. Uh, so Heidi, back to you. I've got lots more questions for you. Um, so you did mention the word case study, but I'll just uh, ask this again in case you want to expand on it. Um, does the course include many case studies or practical examples of employment law cases or issues? Oh, absolutely. Um, I think it's key. It's foundational to how we learn uh, in this course uh, because we see how each case situation, each case is case specific. That means it's uh, has very um, it's context specific, different variables that come into play. So it's hugely important to include these in the curriculum design. And so that's the way I've designed the course. Um, lots of case studies, practical examples of employment law issues. Um, so in short, yes, the answer is yes. And, and usually what I'll do is, I think I've mentioned this, is that at the beginning of the class, I might set up a case study. I'll have, I'll have it set up as you know everybody read the case study and then maybe the first hour we're going to go through it we're going to first go into breakout rooms we're going to explore different um, topics within that case study everybody brings their perspective to the table um, and then we bring everybody together and we look at different concepts and it's a really great way of looking at um, diversity of perspective and seeing what others see in a case that say somebody else hasn't picked up on it and it just it really gets um, the diversity of perspective to the table and it's hugely important to this Amazing. course uh, it sounds like there's really an emphasis on critical thinking as well and um, finding those um, maybe less obvious answers or less obvious insights would you say mm -hmm, absolutely it's all about different perspectives the critical thinking piece is core um, and key to to really um, to this course. Um, you've uh, inspired me to ask another spontaneous question. Um, I sometimes ask instructors what kind of uh, qualities or characteristics would help a student succeed in the course. And so we've already talked about uh, critical thinking and I guess embracing diversity of perspectives. What other qualities would you might you say? Um, I think, um, so critical thinking for sure, um, but just asking questions, um, mm -hmm. exploring, getting comfortable in what I call playing in the sandbox. When I talk about playing in the span, uh, sandbox, getting comfortable looking and researching answers in by typing something in your browser, getting comfortable. So if you, for example, you know, we might explore what do we mean by the term reasonable and then have everybody, you know, put the, the term reasonable in your browser. What does it come up with now? Can you give me an example of what would be reasonable or um, just getting comfortable playing in the sandbox, going into various search sites, um, doing research, doing analysis, hugely important. And a key aspect is um, keeping up uh, with the um with the textbook the chapters and the case studies it's hugely important um, because it's building it's it's foundational it is um it is part of how the course is developed and to build on that information and that knowledge structure wonderful um yeah very, very fun thank you 
Um, so just for our Zoom attendee uh, who asked the question about uh, how much of this course is covered in the diploma program. So we did get a response from our career programs admissions personnel. Um, they said the, the Diploma in Human Resources Management Program at Ashton, uh, it does cover employee and labor relations, but it will not cover the comprehensive views and concepts and info specifically about British Columbia employment law, um, which would be covered in this course. So if you've already taken our diploma program, uh, there's still a lot you could benefit from this course. Or if you're you know, planning on taking the diploma program in the future, uh, definitely both uh, the program and course have uh, you know some overlapping content, but obviously there's a, big emphasis and, and a lot more in-depth uh, conversation happening in, in this course, which would be certainly worthwhile to study. Uh, so hopefully that answers your question and um, you can always leave us a comment or a follow-up question if you have it. Um, so Heidi, um, let's talk a little bit about who would benefit from taking this course. Um, I think the obvious answer is human resources professionals, but um, for one, you know, why would they benefit and, and who else would benefit? Um, well, I think every, I mean, the short answer is everybody would benefit. Um, increasingly, uh, companies, um, you know, they, they have to be familiar with the legislation. Employment law affects every in the workplace, not just employers, but employees as well. Um, so whether you are functioning as an HR professional, or if you're working in labor relations or administration, or if you're working as a manager in marketing uh, or in finance, you it is a, um, a huge tool if you're familiar with the, the legislation, how the legislation works, how, all, um, how broad it is in terms of its, its reach and how um, it's important to be, to have a familiar, familiar, familiarity with it, but also to understand how broad reaching it is because it can have an impact on the organization from a financial perspective, if there's, um, there's non-compliance, um, um, how it can affect your employee brand in terms of, um, you know, if there's, there's, if there's a contravention of human rights or, uh, recruitment practices mm -hmm. or occupational health and safety it impacts everybody. So it is a course that would benefit anybody, um, and not just HR professionals. Um, it is something that is of extreme value to organizations across the board. Yeah, it, it sounds like um, with, you know, brand awareness and, you know, potential risk management, um, marketing professionals could certainly benefit too, you know, Better, better to have the knowledge ahead of time than to have to respond to a negative Google review or social media comment. Um, so it's certainly a wide reaching course and that's a very broad uh, application for working professionals. Yeah. Um, next question for you uh so yeah this is always a fun one because uh, you can get personal and creative with it so how would you describe your personal teaching style um well uh, you know i'm always looking to inspire obviously to share information but i also really try to provoke thought um, i try to help students uncover preconceptions to think critically, to understand different viewpoints from many disciplines. Um, a big part of my teaching style is really to ask a lot of questions. I don't, um, I don't, uh, you know, I don't want to just give students all the information up front. I like them to try and uncover the information as we go through the course and help them put it together. And I think it's hugely important because you can see um, when students start to look for answers themselves as opposed to be given it right up front you just see a whole um uncovering process that happens and you can see that critical thinking really take take root um another big key uh, um uh, aspect of my teaching style is i try to apply an interdisciplinary approach to uh my teaching and and what i mean by that is um i have a, a lot of experience uh most of my experience comes from an hr background but i also teach psychology courses i teach business courses oh, wow. courses 
And so it really, really helps uh, with that different functional expertise. So increasingly companies, they're valuing diverse-minded employees with different functional mm -hmm. experience. So it helps in the problem solving um, aspect and the creativity and challenging the status quo and to think differently. So when you bring, um, if you're teaching an HR course in law, or if you're teaching a marketing course, but you're bringing different aspects into it, you can see how these interdisciplines really help um, gain different perspectives. And it applies uh, throughout the workplace. And so my goal as an instructor is really to facilitate and foster the sharing, um, as well as the interchange of ideas and information, but also build trust. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, um, my goal is to set students up for success. Um, and so you will look at published court decisions from various legal cases. So it might be from the service industry, it might be from um, government uh, um, organization, it might be from a resources uh, organization. And just look at what factors were involved in the decision making process. And it could be involved disability rights, religious discrimination, sexual mm -hmm. harassment, um, all of those. Um, so that's really um, where I like to bring in those cross-disciplinary examples. That's such an amazing answer. And uh, you actually touched upon one of my favorite things to talk about, which is that interdisciplinary learning. Uh, I'm so curious, can I ask how your experience with psychology would influence uh, your understanding of employment law? Or do you have any examples to talk about for that? Well, psychology uh, courses are really getting a lot of traction. So organizational behavior is the key oh. one. So organizational behavior. So we look at everything from um, personality to uh, motivation, engagement, mm -hmm. um, how that impacts the workplace, how it relates to uh, employment law. Um, as well, we might explore conflict resolution or negotiations. Uh, the legal aspect um, of that. So organizational behavior is a, a course that's gaining traction in many disciplines. It's not, it's no longer just offered you know, under the psychology umbrella, but also under HR, uh, business, uh, marketing. Organizational behavior is all about employees and motivation engagement. And how do we get employees to do what we want them to do? How do we mm -hmm. get them to work with others? How to, you know, we have diverse workplaces. Um, diversity is a huge umbrella, um, has very different, very many different um, uh, concepts that fall under that. And how do you work with other people? How do you, how do you improve your uh, your EQ? your emotional mm -hmm. intelligence and your self-awareness, your self-regulation. So all of these impact uh, employment law. Um, think about discrimination, human rights, sexual mm -hmm. orientation, disabilities. Um, you know, how do we work with that and uh, work with all those elements in the workplace? It's so fascinating to hear you talk about that. And on the surface, uh, psychology and employment law might not sound like they have a lot in common, but it makes perfect sense the way you describe it. And particularly looking at organizational behavior and um, a couple of other, you know, HR courses that you mentioned too, right? Conflict resolution, negotiation. Uh, so if, folks, if anyone is particularly interested in those subject areas, um, a lot of our continuing education human resources courses have a little bit of overlap, but we do uh, have individual courses for those topics as well. Um, so Next question that I have is, yeah, what about expectations of students who enroll in the course and how much time uh, they'll need to spend on the course materials outside of class time plus the lectures? Um, well, it, it varies a little bit from week to week, depending if there's an exam. Um, um, I, you know, I, it, it also depends on how long it takes, you know, to, to go through the chapter and the case studies. Um, anywhere from two to four hours a week at the very most, yeah. I would say. Um, it really depends. I've, you know, I, I know students that have spent, uh, um, put a lot more time into it because they, they want to do more research than mm -hmm. what the curriculum dictates, but um, I'd say two to four. 
No, it sounds great. Mm -hmm. Nice and attainable for folks, even if they have a, you know, full-time job that they're doing as well. Um, that's why we love, you know, the accessibility of, of these kinds of uh, courses. Well, and just to touch on that, um, you know, um, something that I, I take into consideration, I'm very mindful of a lot of the students that take the course, um, you know, they have life outside of the course. We have families, we have young children, we have elderly that we may be taking care of um, our parents, or, you know, we have a full time job, um, whatever it happens to be. And, you know, if somebody has any situations where they're finding it too, there's, there's, they're trying to manage all of the elements, you know, there's nothing preventing a student from coming to me and having a conversation and seeing how we can make it work. Uh, fundamental to my teachings is I want to set the student up for success. And when I talk about success, it's not just about, you know, achieving a certain grade. It's about really understanding the course material. And so my goal is to set you up for success. I'm not here to set you up for failure. It's about having a really positive experience in the course and really being able to take away something that is not only interesting, but is practically workable. It's applied into um, every part of your workplace. I love that. And it's definitely a compassionate approach to teaching, which is amazing to have. Um, so do you have a couple more questions? And just for folks who are uh, leaving questions in the comments, if you do have any questions specifically about uh, scheduling or um, your own admissions or application or anything like that, um, definitely reach out to Maggie um, at ceinfo at ashencollege.ca and you can have a bit more of a lengthy conversation about whatever you need. Um, or you can phone us during office hours at 604-891. 1256 or toll free at 1 866 759 6006. Just a great way if you have any hyper specific questions, we can get those answered for you as well. Um, so, Heidi, yeah, let's talk about um, what are your thoughts on the labor market and the demand for experts in employment law? Um, I, uh, you know, I, I am constantly researching and I'm on a number of feeds uh, throughout different organizations uh, that I pay attention to. And the, the, um, I, what I see often is just the demand for that is increasing and increasing ever so rapidly. Um, it's hugely important. It's so relevant organizations. Um, you know, they don't want to be spending a lot of money on liability on, uh, you know, uh, being sued or in contravention of the law. They're trying to motivate and engage their employees. They want to do what's right, what they're supposed to do. And so it's a hugely relevant um, area of study and it's so important. Um, so it's something that continues to gain uh, in importance and relevance in a huge and significant way. That's very exciting to hear, uh, especially for prospective students um, that, you know, there's that practical emphasis and that very real demand. Um, employers are looking for it, it's certainly going to help boost your resume and, and help in a very practical way as well. Um, another fun question, what, what do you think students will enjoy most about the course? Oh, um, I think, you know, my experience has been uh, from students is the big takeaway is they um, are always surprised at the diversity of different subjects that we explore, the different case studies, uh, just a realization of how many different areas uh, law covers, uh, whether it's occupational health and safety, whether it's labor law, whether it's employment standards, whether it's um, diversity. Um, so it's, it's huge and it's, um, there's just so many different areas that we cover. Mm -hmm. And so that is a big uh, takeaway, but also just how we cover the course material. As I mentioned at the beginning, um, it's the way that I set uh, the course material up. Um, I ask a lot of questions. Um, I don't, I'm just, I'm not just a talking head on a screen to go through PowerPoints. <laughs> I like to pose questions. I like to give 
uh, a, you know, an example or an excerpt of something and say, well, what would you do? And if people are uncomfortable speaking, you know, in front of uh, the rest of the class, I always offer the opportunity to, you know, send me a private chat on the chat box. And um, I can, you know, say one student has commented, they think this, and that way, at least people don't feel uncomfortable about expressing their views if they think they're wrong, or they didn't get it right, or whatever it happens to be. And so just getting all those different perspectives out there is hugely relevant. Mm -hmm. That's, uh, you touched upon such an interesting benefit to online learning that we really don't get in a live classroom. Uh, you know, you can't privately message the instructor and say, hey, I think this is it, but I'm kind of too embarrassed to say out loud. Um, so there's definitely a lot of uh, aspects of online learning that are very well suited to anyone who's a little bit more on the interest, introverted side of things. Um, just, you know, added accessibility, it sounds like. Mm -hmm. um, I had a, one question that uh, I forgot to add to my list, but it's a fun one I'd love to ask if you're comfortable. Um, because we care so much about uh, continuing education and you know ongoing learning at Ashton College, I always like asking our instructors if they have any favorite books that they're reading right now, um, even if it's just something for fun, um, a novel that you like, or anything uh, educational that you might be reading. Oh, I have about four books on the go, and um, I read the newspapers daily, as well as various journals, HR journals, the legal journals. Um, but uh, one of the books I'm reading right now is Obama's book. Um, I'm also reading um, another book uh, by Malcolm Gladwell. I've got two of his on the go. Um, I read Outliers before, but I'm reading it again because I think it's hugely relevant to what a lot what's going on um out there with covid and return to work places mm -hmm. uh practices um so those are a couple that i've got going on but uh i'm working in news for so many years uh, a big part of my reading repertoire is knowing what's going on so mm -hmm. I follow CBC News, uh, Globe and Mail, I read the Financial Times, I read the New York Times, I read The Economist, I read The Atlantic. Uh, these wow. are just really daily uh, articles that I read on a daily basis. But And then, um, as I've mentioned, I've got about three or four books on the go. So lots of stuff, for sure. Wow. Well, yeah, you're a great person to ask that question to on the fly then. <laughs> awesome. Um, so as we move towards wrapping up, I, I do have a last question for you, but I just wanted to give out another shout out to our attendees. Um, if you do have any more questions for Heidi about the course um, or her teaching experience or style um, or anything uh, general admissions for Maggie, uh, you can use the raise hand function on Zoom. Uh, you can put those in the chat box or Q&A box. Um, Lindsay, do we have any questions on our Facebook Live right now? I do have one for you. Wonderful. So it goes, I'm an admin assistant with no background in HR, but I need to take this course for the company I'm working for. Will I have a hard time in this course if I don't have an HR background? Great question, Heidi. So will students have a hard time if they don't have an HR background? Um, no, we, so we we'll start out with the basics and we build from there. Um, the key though, is to make sure that you keep up with your readings. Um, that is, and that is with uh, the HR program, that is with the, uh, with the law program. Um, as long as you keep up with the, the readings, it is foundational. It continues to compound in terms of the information, the concepts that you explore. Um, so the answer is, uh, you know, as long as you keep up with the readings, you'll be fine. Awesome. Thanks so much. Yeah, I have a lot of students that um, um, that have an admin uh, assistant background. Uh, they're looking into getting into law, either the legal aspect or labor relations or HR, and um, so and it they've they've done very well. So wonderful. Um, thank you, Heidi, and thank you, Lindsay, for the question from Facebook Live. Um, and yeah, just as we move towards wrapping up. Um, Folks, if you do have any more questions that come up later, um, please do reach out to us, uh, ceinfo at ashtoncollege.ca, uh, or you can reach Maggie directly at 604-891-1256 or toll free at 1-866-759-6006. 
So Heidi, my last question for you is, uh, do you have any final words of advice or thoughts to share, um, particularly if a student is considering taking the course, but maybe they're a little unsure? What's, what's your final word of advice for them? I say, if you're interested in it, go for it. It will have broad application. Doesn't matter what your background is. Um, and, um, you know, if you're a little anxious in terms of, well, what if I don't understand? understand it. Um, my, my comment to all my students is, you know, if you're not challenging yourself, you're not growing yourself. So it's a great opportunity to grow yourself in a way that will get a lot of traction um, in your career. Employment law is, a, is in place to guarantee a fair and safe working environment for employers as well as employees. And, um, you know, employment law for the employer, how their employers should be treated within the workplace, all of these elements, um, it's not specific to any part of your career and um, it will benefit you in many, many ways um, going forward, not just as an employer, but as an employee as well. Um, we need to understand employment law so that we're providing an optimal working environment for employees. And that's what we're all striving for. You know, we want a um, place where we can be work, where we're, we feel safe, um, where it's fair, um, where there's respect, but also motivation, engagement, big, big play, a big role for that. So my final advice or thoughts, if you're thinking about it, go for it. Um, it you'll learn lots a lot um and there'll be some areas and concepts that will be challenging but um always just keep in mind when you are being challenged you're growing you're growing and it will benefit you immensely uh throughout your career <laughs>